I'm Natasha Owen, the Real Life on Calabari Kingdom Team. We have a wonderful guest today, Honorable Awongo, former commissioner for Chief Tennessee and Community Affairs. Thank you very much. My name is Awoingo Theophilus Kalama. I'm a former member of River State Executive Council, Commissioner in charge of the Ministry of Chief Tennessee and Community Affairs. Also, I was uh, a former theatrical committee chairman for Asarito Local Government area. The former Chief of Staff to the Speaker, River State House of Assembly. Former Chief of Staff to the Chairman, one time Chairman of Asarto Local Government Area, Honor Chief Honorable Larole Dan Brown. Several other uh, offices that I've held in that local government, but let me just end it here. I am married to a, to a beautiful wife with two kids, a boy and a girl. I'm a politician. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Today, we have a wonderful topic, unity and peaceful coexistence of the Calabari Kingdom. I would love to ask a question, sir. What can bring the continuous unity of the Calabari ethnic nationality? To answer that question, back a little, how our forebears lived when we are yet unborn. I grew up to meet a Calabari nation that the man has three tubers of yam and he realizes that his next door neighbor does not have something to eat. He does not need that neighbor to come begging before he calls him. Him now, bo mi mokite muke yau menanga. That is the Calabari Kingdom that I grew up to meet. Now, to your question, because of that bond of uh, brotherliness. You see, the Calabari Union was a united whole that was fostering the collective prosperity of the nation. Today, I'm sorry to say, the story is not the same. What can we do? Let us retrace our steps backward. The essential thing is love. You know, Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, said, the greatest of all the love is love. There is no love amongst us as Calabari people. And once we are able to realize that, and imbibe that culture of loving ourselves, I think the issue of unity is just uh, a step a way for, for, for us to grab. Let me let me let me let me let me expand it a little bit. I remember during my primary school days as a kid. If you come back home weeping that uh, your neighbor or an uncle beat you up. Your mother or your father do not get up to go challenge that neighbor. No, she immediately tells you that then you did something wrong. Then, back then, if you see, I always, I always emphasize this point. Because it is key to whatever we are discussing about Calabari unity. We just have to get it right. As a child, if you are going to fetch water from the well, you will know in most of the Calabari uh, communities, then you get water, water from the well. As a young boy, as a young girl, if you are going to the well and you see an elderly woman or man going to the well to fetch water, 
Nobody tells you to drop your own bucket. You will take her own, fetch it, and carry it to her house. She prays and blesses you. I doubt how many of our kids, our younger ones back home, do that. Now, what am I trying to, to say? The, the values, the values our parents instilled in us are no longer there today. There is a level of moral decay in our societies. And it has permeated all the structure of our society such that you became suspicious of your, your brother. You became suspicious of even your, your, your council of chiefs. So tell me how you're, you're going to get a unity. For us to be united, we need to go back to what our society used to be. That love for one another must be there. That, I think, is the starting point. You are the former commissioner of uh, Chief Tennessee and uh, yeah. Community Affairs. And that me as administration. Yes. What can you say during your com uh, commissionership and now? Uh, um, you remember, it was a very short period. I, I was appointed uh, uh, caretaker committee chairman in June. Then in July, I was asked, asked to resign and come, come, up, come forward for that office. I stayed in office for about three months. But you know, the, I, I say it without uh, fear of any contradiction. The Ministry of Chieftaincy and Community Affairs is one of the most difficult ministries in, in River State. I stand to be corrected. Reason being that virtually every sector, every section of the state has something to do with that ministry. The youth will be coming because of the constant issues with uh, multinational companies. Traditional rulers will be coming because of uh, the persistent uh, shift and see uh, squabbles. Then uh, company executives who are having one issue or the other will be flooding that. So you, you have a situation where um, you are on your toes 24-7. I remember as a commissioner, there are days that I will not even remember that I have not eaten till about 4, 4 p.m. You know, so you are always, you're always on the go, you know, but then, I am proud, I am so proud to say that within the short period that I stayed in that office, I was able to touch the lives of uh, people that came together, came, came in contact with me. I remember I was responsible for ensuring that the people of uh, Onne sign the memorandum of understanding with uh, uh, Indorama for the establishment of the fertilizer system. It was, it was a tough one, I, I, let me tell you. You know, when you are saddled with uh, responsibilities, if you have God on your side, you see that uh, you always uh, uh, make the right decision. Always so, yeah. so, uh, we did that with the, with the wisdom of God, in spite of the, the difficult stance of some of the traditional rulers from that Aziz. I, I, I stood my ground, I said, we have to do it. And with the wisdom of God on my side, we were able to get that done. Um, Kola community was having serious uh, Leadership issue. We also got into that, and uh, we also got into we also got into that, and uh, we were just about settling it. But I know the issue of their, their outstanding uh, scholarship payment for students in their university was was taken care of before I left uh, that uh, this thing. 
Eba community, we, we, we have, we tackled. Bakana kingship problem was on my table and we are tackling it head on before I left. The signing of a uh, uh, no, uh, memorandum of understanding between the community and uh, Nest Oif. Yeah, the, uh, what most people don't know, I'm from K. Oh. Yes, uh, paternally I'm K. You know, and when K, when the community came, they came in as a divided uh, house. And uh, my permanent secretary and the director for community affairs were with me. And what I did was to excuse my PAMSEC and the director. So just, just give me a minute, let me talk to my people. These are, these are my people. And I asked them, who amongst you who don't know me as the son of uh, Theophilus Walter Ikalama? You know, we know you. I said, okay, you know me. And uh, all of you here can be my fathers, my mothers, or my elderly ones. And today you, you came to me in the presence of uh, my PAMSEC that I should say to you. I will not give you that honor. You know the issues. You know who should be on that list of community trust. So I will just give you 10 minutes. I will go back to my office. If you are not able to put together that list, I will come back and make up the list myself. So I left them and uh, went back to my office. Less than 10 minutes, they called me that uh, they've been able to, to resolve. You know, that's, well, that's, that is the wisdom of God. You know, uh, for every leader, you need the wisdom of God for you to be able to listen. So many, so many, within that short period of time, so many, like I said, Eba, uh, community issues. We did so. There, there was one that uh, that should be a community in Oyugo, local government. By the tradition of that community, the eldest person, eldest male, is supposed to be the the ruler. Then, when this man died, perhaps while he was alive, his son, through the father's contact, made some money. When the father died, this young man used his money to influence uh, some of the elderly ones in the community. And they wanted to make him the, the ruler. So one teacher said, no, I will not accept this. I will not accept this. So he challenged the petition to me. So I invited them. And they came. They came. After listening to them, I noticed one very elderly man. So I asked him, Pa, can you tell me the tradition, the process of ascending this thing? He said, my son, it is supposed to be the eldest. I said, so how come? He said, they bring, they bring money up. So I, so I, I told the young man, I told him, look, God has destined our life that whatever belongs to you will come to you naturally. Anything that is not yours will never be yours. If you try to force yourself against the will of God, there is usually a repercussion. In my opinion, you are not the right person for that position. So you go back and do the right thing. They went back and uh, two weeks later, they came back as a community to thank me that uh, they've gone and made that. What am I saying? When you are, you are in position of authority, don't allow your passion or your sentimental att attachment to tint your decision-making process. That is one problem most of our leaders have. So I don't know if I have answered your decision. Yes, you have, sir. Thank you very much.